This is the biggest opportunity in the San Diego housing market in 2023. What's up, everybody? My name is Kenny Simpson with C2 Financial, and today I'm joined by Maxwell Ventura with Real Broker. Thank you What's for up, having Max? me. What's up, Max? How are you? I'm doing great. Cool. So, guys, today we want to jump in right away, not waste time. If you're looking to buy a first time um, home in San Diego and you want to do the house hack or you're a real estate investor, we are going to go through and tell you what the biggest opportunity in San Diego right now is, um, how you can capitalize it, what kind of deals to look for. And also we can jump into the financing and some of the requirements too. So Max, you ready? I'm ready. Cool. <laughs> Let's do it. So without further ado, we are talking about, when we talk about a house hack, that is a person that wants to buy maybe a house or a two to four unit that is looking to add um, rental units or have rental units so they can offset their mortgage payment. And if we're talking about a real estate investor that maybe is looking to add, you know, buy a single family or a two unit up to four unit, and they're looking to add ADUs, mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about here, guys, today is adding accessory dwelling units and how Max and I've seen, whether it's through personal deals or through clients, I've just seen deal after deal, people went on cash flow, keep people went on cap rate, and then people just selling on an equity winning. Uh, what are you seeing out right. there? Yeah, so there, there's so many different ways to go the ADU route. You have, the first thing you have to look at is what's the zoning on the lot. And so from a residential standpoint, and I'll, and I'll just specifically talk about San Diego City. Okay. There's 18 different municipalities in the county, San Diego City being the largest. So it's it encompasses a very large area. It's m more so than just metro, you know, a handful of the beaches, et cetera. So, and then just, you know, fun fact, right after San Diego City, the next largest municipality is Chula Vista. And Ch Chula has, I think, seven or eight different zip codes. Wow. Whereas San Diego City has three or four times that many. Jeez. So. Um, but getting back to ADUs, you know, so the first thing you want to do is identify the lot. So if we're talking residential, is it residential single family or is it residential multifamily? If it's an RM or residential multifamily, there's a, there's a handful of different ways that you can go about getting ADUs, converting them. There's a number of them and, and I'm happy to go into the specifics, but aside from what the lot is designated, you also have ADU a bonus, and that can be done on either an RS or an RM. And then there's also affordable bonus density, which then allows you to add more ADUs as well. So okay, there's a cool. handful of different options. So let's just say we're going to get into the tactical, the nitty gritty of it. Let's say we're, somebody's listening to this right now. They're a first time buyer, um, but they've also had a friend or they've read about this ADU play. And you know, the reason guys why ADUs are so big right now is Max and I are looking over here. Um, you can't see the computer, but we were going through inventory. And just like at the top of list, new listings, pending sales, closed sales, all three of those numbers, they're all down from last year. And we were talking about this. We're not comparing it from like an all time high of 2008 like inventory. We're not comparing it to an average inventory of 10 to 12,000. We're comparing it to an inventory from 2022, which is already low. We are news listings are down 40%. Pending sales are down almost 30%. And then closed sales are almost down 35. So what we're saying is there's a major housing shortage in San Diego already. Then mm -hmm. there's a major supply issue and that's the problem. So right now, that's why you're seeing whether it's a homeowner or a real estate investor or anybody that's looking to do this, that's why the ADU is so important because that's one way we can easily get housing right now. And mm -hmm. is that what you're seeing? 100%. You know, and the good thing is that the city of San Diego has actually led the way from a legislative standpoint Crazy. in, in uh, crafting a municipal code that's uh, that uh, has allowed so many different ways to add units. We obviously have an inventory um, crisis, right? And then we've talked about the four corners before. We have Mexico directly to the south, Pacific Ocean to the west, military base to the north, and a national forest to the east. And the majority of the market is is resale. I think it, I, I want to say it's about seventy five to eighty percent. So last yeah. last year. We had about 9,500 new construction units, which was considered good, and it still was not enough to, to meet with the demand of last year. 
this year is going to be tracking for less n- new construction that we had last year. So the majority of that's yeah. condo. Majority of it is condo. I think there was 12 n- master communities and nine of them were up in North County where you have more land, bigger, okay. bigger parcels. So majority, yeah. like a lot of condos. So if you're not in the condo game, that's not for you. Uh, doing a house hack on a condo is probably out. So right, right. if you're doing a house hack, probably on a new construction, it's probably not even in your play either. So, um, Let's talk about, let's just go through right now, the first time home buyer, they, whether they're looking for one unit or two unit or three, unit, whatever they're looking for, they're trying to buy a house with a minimal down, maybe save their cash to add that ADU, convert the garage, convert a storage unit, or maybe they're buying a house where there's a already illegal ADU, which we can figure out how to close on and then convert it. What should they be looking for and where? to know, hey, is this a property? Even though they can come to you, an agent that already knows this, mm-hmm. let's say they're like, well, I wanna go look on my own. Where do I go look? How can I know just because you tell me, Max, like this is good, how, how can I confirm that? Yeah, that's yeah, it's a great question. And a good place to start is what's the zoning? Because it, what being able to determine what I can do, a big factor of that is simply, is it an RS or an RM? Again, I'm just talking about the city of San Diego. Each municipality has its own zoning, but the good thing is it's all public information. So where can I go? Well, San Diego.gov, and there are a handful of links, but you'll want to look at the ZAP map, Z-A-P-P map. And then right on there, it'll show you, is it RS or RM? Okay. Um, but, you know, you nailed it. There's um, there's a number, we're at, we have an inventory shortage. And, you know, the good thing is, I think with social media now, it's made, there's it's brought um, a massive awareness to millennials in that this is possible. Before, you'd have to go to an agent you didn't know. And, and the code has changed over the last few years to make it more accessible. But with the advent of like bigger pockets, for example, you know, there's a much larger percentage of people that are aware of house hacking. They're aware of ADUs. So it's, it's good in that sense that there's a much larger awareness and, and the buyer pool millennials has increased over the last decade or so. Yeah. And I think also too, is that, um, I've had this conversation with many people just probably as you have, is that, you know, take out the inventory and all that you got the millennial buyer. But I think like you just said, because of podcasts and YouTube and bigger pockets and books and just stuff like we're putting out here, educational thing, um, meetups, people are coming to a place like San Diego and they're like, well, I'm in my thirties and my high twenties. I want to buy a place, but I'm not looking for some house to live by myself. Right. That's kind of like uncommon almost. It's like, I want to come here and I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. I don't have a girlfriend, whatever. Maybe you have some of those, but I want a house hack. And the reason why people are house hacking is they're trying to take a mortgage that's five grand and turn it into two grand. Because a lot of people here in San Diego, they're like, look, I'm willing to have roommates. I'm willing to have somebody live out back because I don't want to be house poor. Still Mm want to travel, want to eat out, want to enjoy my life, have experiences, save money, invest. But it's kind of hard to do that, even if you make good money here, if you just go buy a house. So I think that's been one thing that changed. And then obviously people getting educated and other people going, oh, I bought a house or a two unit and I'm, I'm paying zero <coughs> mortgage or this. People that's being talked about, about friends and everybody's realizing that the house with the picket fence and the dog and the kids and that, that's probably maybe in Ohio or Oklahoma or Texas. But in San Diego, it's not that it's heat, not here, but there's we're, like people are looking at other things. Mm. They don't, and like, you know, here you could buy, you could have a unit out back, you could vacation rent and make a lot of money. So right. there's just many different options now. And that's what we're exploring. Probably the one of the most popular options where people are getting massive return cash flow, equity, and then the ability to, even if they put all this money in almost refi and recoup some of it back out to put back in their bank or redeploy it. Right. Yeah. Cause you have to think, well, you can still have the picket fence. You just might have to split your parcel, yeah. parcel <laughs> yeah. in half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it helps if you have back alley access. Cause then, uh, then yeah. you essentially have and I'm assuming it's a single family home, but now you have essentially two homes that are on one parcel and they're, and they're split off and you have a fence in the middle. So that, that definitely happens. Um, you know, what's great is that if you purchase a single family residence and it, it doesn't have to, it could be a duplex, a tri or a quad, you're still in that single family realm. So you're able to leverage debt, come in with less money down, but just let's just take the single family example. If you have a garage, a detached garage in the back, or even nothing, because you can always infill an ADU, but the garage conversion is going to be a little bit easier. Well, now you've just turned, you went from one door to two, essentially. So you may have spent 
the median sales price is for uh, a single family home in San Diego is 900,000. So let's just say you spent around 900,000 for the, for the home and for the parcel. But if you have that detached garage to come in and do a conversion of that garage to an ADU, well now how much did you spend for the second door, the second unit, pennies on the dollar. Let's just say in, to, for easy math, maybe you spent a hundred thousand converting that uh, gar- really garage. Nice. Yeah. So now you went from one unit at 900,000 to two units at a million essentially. So you just, you know, it's, so the ADU play is such a great play for that reason. And the rents for, let's just take, let's say a, a 250 square foot garage that you just converted or 300. Well, in a, in any decent area, you know, you're at least looking at two thousand dollars. Oh, and a, right, probably if you have a nice house, yeah. nice area, yeah, like yeah. where people are like can exactly, yeah, for sure. It's like a big. Uh, it's definitely like a big um, game changer for somebody. Like we said, you bought the house, you put minimal down in your payments. I'm picking a number. It's five thousand, and you get two. Now you're at three. That's a huge savings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that's that's the win there. Um, let's talk about. Let's talk about quickly walking through like a first time home buyer through that process. Right. So typically somebody reaches out to you, they're going to have a conversation saying, I want to do a house hack. You're going to be kind of narrowing down. Can you kind of like talk about what that conversation looks like? Also too, what should somebody be asking in that conversation? Right? Like what should they be asking for an agent to make sure it's the right agent, um, areas, certain places, and then we can kind of get onto the financing after that. Yeah. So the good thing is on any residential single family lot or an RM, so any RS, any RM, essentially any, any lot, you have the ability to add at least one ADU. Wow. So from, from a bird's eye view, like you haven't filtered anything down yet. So that, but that's good news. So then from there on, you know, obviously your preferences come into play, location, price, et cetera. But we just want to make sure that the parcel is big enough because you have to take into consideration setbacks. Although it's with ADUs, it's very lenient. And then even in some instances, you can even go all the way up to the setback to the property line. Wow. So there's some variables there in red tape, but um, so you just need to have enough room on the parcel. That's usually not even a problem. Um, It's better if you do have back alley access typically, because then if you do want to put a fence up in between you and and this converted unit, you want to be completely out of sight, out of mind. You could do that with back alley access. It makes it a lot easier. You don't have to have that. Sometimes there's enough space for the tenants to yeah, to come in on the side, right? But it does it tends to make it a little bit easier, cleaner. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you're within a TPA area, transit priority area. Um, it's a half mile, although that rule is actually just getting changed to a, a mile. It's doubling. Okay. Wow, okay. So if, if you're within a mile of a transit priority area, you do not have to worry about parking if you're con- building an ADU or converting into an ADU. So um, the restrictions are really becoming very, very lax. They're, they're continuing to become more lax, as a matter of fact. So it really comes down to how many units, you know, what's the long play? Do I just want one other unit? And that's it, or it's, or is it like, how many ADUs can I fit mm-hmm. on this parcel? Because then we get into, we have to dig in, dig in a little bit and get into the weeds. Is it an RM? Um, can we do one of these bonus an ADU bonus program? So it's again, it just kind of depends how granular we want to get. Okay, so financing, um, we'll go quickly. Single family residence, depending on purchase price and loan amount, but you can get you could buy a million dollar house with. Um, 5% down to save all your cash to go convert the garage. If it's a two unit, you can do FHA three and a half percent down. Same thing. You want to go convert that garage, turn it into a three unit, cool or build or whatever. Uh, FHA three to four units. That's a problem to put in San Diego. It's hard to put three and a half percent down because you have to pass the self-sufficiency test. Simple math. If your payment's five grand and the rent's five grand, we only use 75% you're gonna be way under, it's not gonna work. So the rent has to cover your principal interest, tax insurance, mortgage insurance, the full payment at 75% of the gross rent. So it's hard to do, especially with prices high and rates high, it's tough. Yeah. So if you are listening, I would stick to you know one to two units if you gotta do the FHA down. If you're VA, full, right. well, you're wide open, you can go four units, um, you're good. Um, 0%, that's all there. And then conventional, obviously, 
5% on SFR, 15% on two units, you're gonna go three to four, you're looking at 20% down. Those are your options. And a lot of people do buy places, they come back and say, hey, Kenny, is there, can I get a, is there a lender, a construction lender that does these um, lending for this? And the answer is, I'm gonna give you a short answer, it's no. It's very hard to get you know money for this. Um, you got to think primes at eight. So even if you get a line of credit with somebody, you're already at nine. So if anybody's going to give you this money, if it's a private money lender, you're probably looking at 12% right now. Um, there are people I hear stories are going to banks. They're getting, um, you know, uh, business lines of credit on secure lines of credit and doing it that way. But the best thing would do honestly, is if you can save your money, like, you know, Max is saying, if you can convert that garage for a hundred grand, you're going to put less down and figure out how to get just scrape together and get that done. Maybe put as much on your credit card, things like that. You can always refi out later because you're going to create value. But, um, alternative funding solutions is the way to go. It doesn't make much sense. I feel like there should be a lot more options, but mm. I think as we go further down the road, there might be, but the problem is, is we, this hasn't been around long enough. There's not a ton of comps. So as you and I know, appraisers are having tough times with certain comps and things like that. So I would really just focus on trying to keep minimal down and stack your cash or have a partner to come in and do something like that. And a partnership on your first deal is not a bad idea. Right, right, exactly. So, so that's kind of the first time home buyer overview. Get with an agent if you're gonna do this, like Max, it basically understands what they're doing. If not, it's not that you can't get it done, but you're, you're, you're just going to be doing all this homework and asking all these questions that are not going to get answered by somebody. And then just make sure you're whatever you're getting for financing, um, put minimal down, all that stuff. And then, you know, try to stack the cash. And then the next, the next, uh, person that's going to buy this is the real estate investor, right? And that's where I probably have between first time home buyers and real estate investors. I'd say between my clients, whether they're in, production or done and all this, we've got, they're working on 180 use, which is a lot. Mm. And, um, I would say for real estate investors, this is like the name of the game right now. You know, this is the money maker right now. Absolutely. Yeah. And I can give a little bit of meat too. Like, so an RS versus, versus an RM, I'll just, I'll go in a little bit. So on any RS residential single family, you're allowed one ADU and, and one J ADU is a junior accessory dwelling unit. If it's owner occupied, but on an RM, residential multi, and you can have just a single family house that's located on an RM, even yeah. though it's even though it's deemed residential multifamily, usually there's at least- Many neighborhoods, right? That's very popular. Yes, yeah. yeah. Usually there's at least two units if it is an RM, but sometimes you'll get just one single family home on an RM. But the reason why an RM is, is so advantageous compared to an RS, one, you can automatically, you're allowed two ADUs right off the bat instead of one. But then there's two other rules that are key. And one of them is you can convert 25% of the pre-density units in, into an ADU within the existing founda foundation. So what that means is, like let's just say a duplex, okay. and you can always convert at least one. So it's essentially giving you an extra ADU. And, and I actually just had this on, on a listing of mine. If you have a um, single family home, what they wanted to do was, and what they did is they essentially just put some walls up and turn one unit into two. But so you can do that and, and legally and permanent and not count as those two that I mentioned earlier. So you can do that within the existing living footage. And then the other, the other really good rule is you can convert non habitable space, such as garages is the main one, boiler room storage, into ADUs and you can do that unlimited. So if you have a big garage, you could essentially convert that into two ADUs, non-habitable space, and that doesn't even count with the two that you're automatically gifted. So you can you could take advantage of a of a big garage, put it turn it into two ADUs, and then if you have the space on the lot, you still have two more that you can build wow. afterwards. And that's not even tapping into any of the affordable rules where you have to make a covenant with the city and, and um, a percentage of your additional units after that have to be deemed affordable. So you don't even necessarily have to get into all that um, with an RM lot. So that's just, there, it's so much better if you can find an RM. And, and they have RM in, in areas that are up and coming like Logan Heights, Barrio Logan, um, Stockton, Grant Hill, Sherman Heights, Shell, Southcrest, Shelltown, but then also, you know, nicer areas too, like Pacific Beach, Claremont, et cetera. Yeah. So you guys might be driving around San Diego and you go, 
you'll see a house, a house, a house. All of a sudden, you'll just see an apartment building. You're like, how is that possible? How in the world did somebody build that? Well, it's possible because of the rezoning. We know people that are taking a 5,000 square foot lot and putting, what, 14 units? Yeah, right. It's yeah. like, exactly. and people go, they can't do that. Yeah, they can do that. So, can, yeah. Um, and the, yeah, and the ADUs can all be contiguous together. They don't ha- all have to be detached and separate from each other. So that's important. And that's why you might see also a listing come up. Maybe it's an old dilapidated property and all of a sudden you're like, man, that thing sold quick. Like, mm-hmm. why would somebody buy that piece of junk? Like an investor has been waiting, right? They're mm-hmm. just, it's a goldmine yeah. for them. Yeah. And let's talk about um, timing and kind of timeline. So, you know, you buy your house, you close, you got to go get the plans and permits. What do you think somebody's looking at? Um, what do you kind of hear in these days, Max, with like time frame of just getting the permit process and then also probably finishing a garage is definitely going to be different than if you're building a new one just yeah. because of construction time. Yeah. Yeah. The garage is going to be quicker. The big thing to, again, know right off the bat is are you within the California Coastal Commission? And that's, that's generally for the most part going to be west of the five. So if you're, that could add anywhere from 12 to 18 months Ooh. onto your project. But if you're not within that area, um, and actually that just a little asterisk to that, that's, that actually does not for ADU conversions, but if you're doing an infill, then okay. that's going to add at least, yeah. And you're so within the California is shorter. So, yes. That's yeah, converting yeah. a garage or a storage unit or something. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes, exactly. So a safe, Timeline is approximately nine months. Start to finish. So. Or just, Start to finish. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, you know, nine to 12. Yeah. There is, um, it's hard these days. There are so many people doing it now. I mean, when we, when ADUs were coming out, there was like, I felt like there's like a handful of guys that are doing it. Now there's, I feel like dozens almost. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there are some people that were doing it that were really good. They got overly busy. And then people are going other places. So I would really, you know, there, if you work with us or reach out to us, there's some names, but, you got to call and you got to interview and you got to set realistic expectations. Um, I noticed with mine, even though we were using third party, I just had to get involved and I was calling the city because I was like, well, the timeline's here, you're past it. So I was trying to keep on the city because mm-hmm. the architect or your contractor, your planner, whoever's doing this, they might not be as, you know, uh, what's the word just on, on the ball, Yeah, on the yeah. ball, but it's yeah. your money, your time frame. They, they got a hundred oh, of these. Yeah. You're like, yeah. I need to get this done. Right. Yeah. So emotionally invested. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you basically, the way to get this done is if you send to the city and they're like, Oh, it's 60 day for review, call them on day 61 and say, well, it's day 61 and hold them accountable. And, right. um, also too, when you're sending in changes and submitting changes, a lot of times people send it in there, sit, wait, it's like, no, send the change in. Did you guys get it? When are you going to review it? Okay. I'm going to mark it down my calendar, follow up. Those are the right. things you can do of staying on the city and they'll realize like this guy, Kenny is just going to keep calling me on the date. We should probably get this done. And this guy over here, Max never calls me. So there is a difference. When I right. got involved, I started calling. I was keeping them accountable. It was moving along a lot faster and we were just waiting on somebody else that was calling up once a month to check in. Yeah, that's great advice. You need to be on it. You need to follow up. You need to be relentless because here's the thing. As soon as those comments come back from the city, if you're uh, prompt with with making the corrections or replying and getting it right back to them, that, that was just in that planner's file recently. It's on the top of his mind. So there's a better chance of him getting back to you even quicker if you're quick to respond. Yeah, so... But I think as a real estate investor, what we're seeing is um, I'm seeing somebody buy a property for X. They're converting a garage or doing an ADU and a junior ADU, something like that, turning around, selling it. Um, making, I'm seeing people make half a million, $800 million, even more, depending on where they're buying it, especially like Max was saying before. Let's just take an example. You got a four unit in Pacific Beach with a four car garage. Well, let's say each unit you bought is. What do you think price per door you're looking at for you 700 for four units in yeah, in pb yeah. it's probably over a million okay yeah so yeah. then you well, take not, a four not probably you're definitely over yeah <laughs> well over a million. okay so let's yeah. just call it a million dollars a unit or whatever right okay. Okay. okay okay but now you have four car garage you're like i'm gonna make two units and like max is saying is okay you can make the nicest two units spend 150 on each or 300 yes in. right we're not saying those are gonna be worth a million right. but you're into them for 300 for two units yeah. Just stop and think about the rental return on investment. And I'm telling you, even if down the road, somebody's like, well, you converted units. We're not going to give you a million door. They're still going to give you a, a massive price. 
Yeah, maybe they're going to try to slam you for it. But what I'm saying is I'm just being ultra conservative. Maybe you can't get a million. Maybe they're going to give you 700, 600. But at the very minimum, you can. it's going to go off of what the cap rate is for the neighborhood. Especially if you're so over if, now six units. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We. I mean, even past one unit, even if you're just looking at a duplex, now now it's you know officially an investment property. And so if you can at least, it's better if you have data that you can show historical, you know, last 12 months will be best. But if you can show what it's bringing in, the income, what the expenses are, now you can trade based off of the income approach versus like what the comps are doing in, in the area. That's just kind of what's the, the, the small multifamily realm of two to four units can kind of be the wild west for an appraiser. So luckily, over the last couple of years, ADUs have become more prevalent. So I think it's getting easier and easier to appraise. But you don't have to. The property doesn't necessarily have to appraise from a sales comparison approach. It could be from the income approach. Yeah, multifamily five plus, you are getting priced per door because we've done ours, and if it's two seventy five, they're giving it to you, so it's a win. Yes, like you're. Yeah. So think about it. if you're three hundred in, and let's say you got a million a door, just stop and think about what you just did there. You're you're three hundred in on two million of units. Yeah. yeah. So even if you didn't get that, let's say you just some buyer's not going to give you that, and they're going to give you seven hundred for each. I mean, you're mm -hmm. making a million bucks. Like I've seen people to add an eight, a couple ADUs by the beach to make a million dollars in return is kind of not, I'm not saying you're guaranteed this, you can promise this, but I've seen this over and over again. Yeah. And I just think for the small to medium sized investor, it's, it's hands down the best bang for your buck oh. coming in and adding an extra door or two or three, you know, is going to go light years beyond what any type of renovation is gonna do. And then you might ask, why is the city again so gung-ho on these? Why are they pushing us? Why are they making the rules easier? Why? We, yeah. we don't have inventory. We don't have the dirt to keep building. And then we just have here, everybody wants to be here. Our population's mm -hmm. growing. Um, and we did really well during COVID with, we had people coming in. I mean, maybe we lost people. We had a lot of people come from San Francisco and LA. Mm -hmm. And so we just need units. And if you, and I, one last thing I will leave with this from a renting owning standpoint, if you're going to do a garage and unit, you're like, but Kenny, who's going to rent a 230 square foot garage? Nobody does. <laughs> Number one, you're way wrong. Number two, when you make that small unit, maybe get a designer architect. I'm not telling you, just make it really, really yeah. nice, especially a nice neighborhood. I'm telling you, you go make a really dope, cool, trendy spot for 230 make it very usable, friendly, where somebody can come in and it's dialed in. Maybe you have a bed that comes down from the wall and they put their own mattress, whatever it is. You will get top rent. Somebody will be like, this is amazing. Don't go cheapo on it because it's already, your entry level is already cheap. Right. Just make it cool and trendy. And I'm trying to think like kind of user friendly too with with working with the space. I don't know if you have any Yeah, no, I mean, because with a square or rectangle, you essentially have unlimited options or, or room for creativity. And it's only so much square footage. So really the only additional cost is you're just upgrading for the material and how much extra can that be, you know? So yeah, yeah it definitely makes sense to you know, get in, hire a designer. You'd be surprised as to what you can fit in 200 to 250 square feet. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like, we, we used to manage all those units. It's like we, we had stuff that was 180, 160. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's it from us here. So just to recap, we went over the first time home buyer house hack, you know, whether you're buying a one to four units and you want, and you want to add an ADU, we kind of went over that, went over some financing, went over what to look for, um, as far as, uh, where the properties are located and what kind of zoning. And they went to the real estate investor, which is probably for real estate investor. This is the big, I mean, everybody's jumping on board on this, not everybody, but, um, if you want to get in your, four, in your foot in the door for real estate investing in San Diego where it's expensive to get in and you maybe want to work your way up or trade up to bigger properties, this is a very good entry level way to put capital in and maybe double, triple what you put in and exchange out and do some of these. I mean, I've seen people yeah. do four or five of these, exit out of them and trade up to a larger apartment building, which is a good play. Um, but overall, if we can help you reach out um, really with these type of transactions, having a first time consultant consultation is really smart going through like all the steps, getting you pre-approved. And then when you're ready to go, having a game plan of, you know, who's your architect, who you're going to use and all that. So when you buy a property, you already know I'm going to use this architect. Maybe you have a contractor lined up, get things lined up. So you can just, j just, when you're ready, you just dive right into it.
Love it. Yeah, and the only thing that I would add is, you know, the, the majority of ADU ads are going to be between just one ADU and, and, and a handful. But there are um, there's a project that I know about right now that the investors are adding 23 ADUs because they have the space on the parcel and, <laughs> and they can do it with the code. So, you wow. know, we kind of just just scratched the, the tip of the iceberg. But um, it's really this this ADU play and the different incentives and ways to bonus. It's from the small and medium investor to the large ones, too. Awesome. Well, hey, Max, thanks for coming on. Um, we, at the page after this, we will uh, have all of our information to reach out, contact us. Please reach out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. This stuff might be overwhelming for you. It's not for us. We do this all day, every day. So we love it. We're passionate about it. That's why we want to come on and share it. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys soon.